27, Psalm 127, or once you found it, let's all stand as we read the Word of God this morning, Psalm 127. Everyone standing as we read the Word of God. Psalm 127 and verse 1. If you have it, give me a good strong amen. Amen. Scripture says in verse 1, except the Lord build the what? House. They labor in vain that build it. Except the Lord keep the what? City. The watchman waketh, but in vain. It is vain for you to raise or to rise up early, to sit up late, to eat the bread of sorrows, for so he giveth his beloved sleep. And that's not talking about in church time. <laughs> Just making sure. Amen. Lo, children are an what? Heritage of the who? Lord. And the fruit of the womb is what? His reward. As arrows are in the hand of a mighty man, so are children of the youth. Happy is the man that hath his quiver full of them. They shall not be ashamed, but they shall speak with the enemies in the gate. I want to take these verses, especially verse 3, and I want to talk to you this morning. I want everyone to listen. You say, I don't have any children. You, you probably have grandchildren. Yeah. So I'm single. I'm just young married. We don't have any children. You will have children. Right. That's right. Amen. And at some point, everybody needs this lesson in your life. I want to talk to you on this topic, children, God's gift, God's responsibility. Mm-hmm. Children, God's gift, God's responsibility. Father, I thank you for the fact that we've had several babies here this morning. Moms and dads come. They saw the importance of dedicating their child to you today. Now, Lord, as we come and hear the preaching of the Word of God, I want to take this time and teach these parents and your people this gift, this responsibility that you've given to us. Bless now, I pray in these next few minutes, I ask in Jesus' name, amen. You may be seated. Satan is after your child. Let me say that one more time. I want you to hear that statement. Satan is after your child. He starts at birth, and if I could say it this way, he starts before birth. By going after the mom and dad before birth and getting them into wrong habits, that when that child is born, that child is born into bad habits that mom and dad have. I often say this. I often say children don't inherit mom and dad's bad qualities, they learn mom and dad's bad qualities. There are some people that believe that because that if you're an alcoholic that you inherit um, being an alcoholic. That's not true. You learn how to be an alcoholic. That's all it is. Just because mom and dad might be a thief doesn't mean I have to be a thief. You with me so far? But I could teach my children to be that if I'm that. You see, children don't inherit mom's sinful genes as in what they do. They just learn. Now, they're a sinner. God says, Romans 5, 5, 12, Wherefore is by one man sin entered into the world and death by sin. So death passed upon all men for that all have sinned. Now, yes, mom and dad passed along sin to me. But mom and dad did not make me the sinner that I am. I chose the sin that I do. You with me so far? That's why it's so important that every mom and dad understands what you are doing right now. When you don't think that what you're doing is influencing your child, what you don't understand, it is influencing their child. It is influencing the child. Satan goes after your children through Hollywood. Yeah. And I'm just going to read a few things here, and we'll get into this a little bit later on. He tries to influence your children through influences. He tries to grab your children through parental negligence of their responsibilities. He tries to grab your children through government overreach. He tries to get your children through public education. Understand, Satan is after the child. 
Why? Because if he wins the battle of the child, he defeats the church. He keeps them from going to heaven because they'll likely not get saved and might, and might even go to hell if they don't get saved. So he's after the child. Amen. When I look at children, I am always amazed. Is, is the baby burped yet? I'm just making sure because I don't want the burping on me. <laughs> bring, your, bring Gabriel up here, would you? If that baby burps on me, I'm odd, you're in trouble. <laughs> and that baby, if that baby messes, you're getting them back. I can tell you that right now. <laughs> Just stay right up here. Okay. I look at little Gabriel here. I see innocence. Yeah, that's right. Look at dad, I see guilt. <laughs> When I see Gabriel here, I see potential. When I see Gabriel here, I see fragile. I see fragile. A little baby that is easily, easily influenced. We look at these little babies and we just, you're kicking me, kid. You're as bad as your mom. Yeah, get me that pacifier. Dad has to have one, and so does the son. <laughs> Just like daddy. There you go. Yeah, there you go. Oh, there you go. That's better. You got one for, for our mod, too. But anyway, <laughs> it's amazing. We look at these little babies and say, wow, how precious. Yeah. Amen. How sacred. Everybody, baby's born. Everybody wants to hold the baby. Teenager comes around, no one wants to be around them. <laughs> Precious little baby. Can I tell you, this baby here is, carries a huge responsibility. Because in mom and dad's hands, you have to understand everything that you all do. This child's going to learn it. And what you do in moderation, this child's going to do in excess. So every bad thing that you do in front of this child, understand this child will do in excess. Every good that you do, you hope that your child lives up to that and does more. This is a precious little baby. Here, we've done good so far. There, you go. I know I'd cry if I had to go back to him too. You know, they start growing up. Get up here. They don't look as precious. Sorry. They look a little bit mischievous. Yeah, that smile right there tells it all. And we pray that he doesn't look like dad. Because no child should look that ugly. <laughs> and we look at this and we say, wow. You know, we don't look at him and say, oh, what a cute little thing. We don't do that like we do the baby. Yeah. Then, then, do we have any teenagers in here? I need a teenager. I need one teenager. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah. Come on up here, son. Yeah, there you go. Because I'm, I'm using some boys. I'm sorry. I'm just using boys this morning. And... Um, because I can make fun of boys. I can't make fun of girls. But anyway, everybody get mad at me. <laughs> then they become a teenager. How, how old are you? 13. 13. No, you're not. Good night. <laughs> you know, when they become that teenager, isn't it amazing from that little stage down there to this one right there to this one right here? <laughs> yeah, you be good over there. And we see them, and they grow up, and they, be, they get this teenage, and they all of a sudden, they start thinking they have a mind of their own. Is that right, Mom? Yeah. They start thinking they can tell Mom what to do. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Mom says, son, I don't care how big you are, I can still whoop you. Somebody help me out just a little bit. Mama's enjoying this one right now. Because they never, because 
for some reason, a teenager thinks, I can always take mom and dad out. But mom and dad somehow just knows how to correct the whole thing, son. You know why? Because God gave them to mom and dad. They're precious. What we have to understand, step here, guys. They're precious at that age, but they're just as precious at this age and this age. Because at every age, they're being influenced. And if I can even say it even more, when they start coming here and here, they're influenced even greater. Because they're soaking everything in because they don't believe mom and dad with everything. Don't shake your head just right now. I'm trying to help you, son. They think mom and dad come off of a planet somewhere. Because they got the world by the tail, and they've not even saved one peach fuzz off the face yet. But can I tell you, every stage where there's that little infant, a young man, a teenage young man, every one of them, Satan's after them, but somehow the familiarity, the attitudes they show, cause us not to be as careful with them as we are with them. But I believe we need to be careful with every stage of life. Because every stage of life is very critical in the forming of a young adult that one day that God could use to do something mighty for him if we don't give up on them and if we don't just kind of shove them out to the wolves somewhere, there's got to be some parents that say, I am not going to be a part-time parent. I'm going to be a full-time parent that makes sure that even at this age, they're going to serve the Lord. Thank you, men. You can go be seated. Now, God says that children are a heritage of the Lord. What does that word heritage mean? It means they're his property. That means they're his inheritance. Get this now. Children are not a nuisance to pawn off on your parents. Children are yours. I'm a little, can I just stop right here and just say this? I'm a little concerned with this younger generation that wants to shove their children off on grandpa and grandma because my children are just a bother to me. Somewhere you need to be the parent and love that child because let me tell you something, your children figure it out. They get it on the inside when you're trying to shove them off all the time. They need a daddy. They need a mama. Amen. Nothing wrong with grandparents, but God gave that child to the mom and dad. Amen. Yes, sir. That's right. Go ahead. Amen. Yeah. Amen. We got parents today that say, well, man, if I could, un- if I could undo this child. Well, you can't undo the child. That's right. Yeah. That's right. Can I even go further and say this? Children are not the property of the state. Right. President Biden's education secretary said, made this statement. Parents should not be the primary stakeholder in their kids' education. Let me help you out. That's what, that's what Hitler said to the Germans. Study history. The state does not have priority over my children. God gave that child to me, not the state. They don't know. God gave them to me. God, their, their inheritance, and God gave that child to me to raise. And it's not the state's job to usurp the authority of mom and dad. It's the state's job to clap and cheer the parent as they raise them for the Lord. Yes, sir. For some reason, we've got these parents, we've got these, or this, these, these educators who think they know more than mom and dad. They don't know more than mom and dad. Listen to me. But that mom and dad knows that child. Right. Right. Amen. Amen. In our state. Yeah. In our state. In the month of September and October, they did a mental examination of children in the public schools. 
to determine their mental quality so they can, so the state can determine whether the child needs some sort of mental help. Let me tell you something. That's mom and dad's job. Amen. That's right. Amen. Go ahead. Amen. Because you've got godless people that don't believe in God, questioning them about that child. And let me tell you something. We've got to understand children are an heritage of the Lord. God gave them to me, and my job is to raise that child to serve the Lord. That's my job. It's my job. Now, preacher, okay, how am I to raise that child in the nurture and admonition of the Lord. We talk about that in this certificate right here. We dedicate our children, we dedicate to raise our children in the nurture and admonition of the Lord. What does that mean to raise the child in the nurture and admonition of the Lord? I want, you, I want to point out to you in our text in our text psalm. He says, except the Lord build the house. Yeah. 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 He says, they labor in vain that build it. Except the Lord keep the city. Yeah. The watch and wake in vain. Right. When you build a house, the very... The, the most important part of the house is the foundation. You build a house without a foundation, that house will crumble in the storms. The reason why so many people in this age are crumbling is because they were not built on the foundation of the Lord. If you want your child to grow up mentally strong and capable, you got to make the Lord their foundation. Listen to me, Mom and Dad, I wanna, and I'm going to just say some things you've heard me say, and what I'm saying right now is just basic teaching, but it's, it, it needs to be said. Can I tell you this? That foundation, that, that you, you build your child with a purpose, get this now, to live for the Lord. To live for the Lord. Listen, God gave you that child. They're, in, they're his heritage, his inheritance. What does that mean? That means that God had a purpose for that child, but he says, okay, mom and dad, now your job is to raise that child so that child finds God's purpose, not yours. It's not my job to try to get my child to do what I want them to do. It's my job to get my child to do what God wants them to do. But can I tell you this? If you're going to have a foundation, what's that foundation, okay? That foundation is keep them in church. Sunday morning, Sunday night, Wednesday night, listen to mom and dad, you need to be in church with your children. Amen. Yes, sir. Why? Your children need to see, need to be sitting by you in church, especially Sunday night, Wednesday night, and see a mom and dad listening to the you say, well, preacher, I'm busy. Preacher, I'm tired. So you're too tired and too busy for God. Come on now. Go ahead, preacher. That's it. Amen. Amen, preaching. Good preacher right now. Amen. Listen to me, everybody, everybody. And I know that this, that you think I'm a broken record, but I'm telling you, that child has the best chance to turn out right if you keep them in church Sunday morning, Sunday night, and Wednesday night. Yes, sir. It's not that you're inferior. It's just that there's another voice preaching the truth that you're trying to teach them inside the home. If you're teaching that book right there, then I come in here and I teach it and that child hears it. He said, well, they're too young to hear. Let me tell you something. You'd be shocked what children learn at a young age. You don't believe me. Let me tell you what happens. How many times have your children embarrassed you when they're this tall? That girl. I would teach her cigarettes are bad. I get some cigarettes. I say cigarettes bad. Say it. She goes rats bad. Rats bad. I said say it again. Rats bad. Rats bad. I I I get the, I get a picture. I jump up and down. Cigarettes bad. Cigarettes bad. Say it. Rats bad. Rats bad. I get a picture of of a beer can. I get that beer can. I said, Katie, I said, I, I, I didn't call her Katie, then called Caitlin. I said, Caitlin, I said, beer's bad, beer's bad. Say it, beer bad, beer bad. I said, that's right, say it again. Beer bad, beer bad. We're in, the, we're in this grocery store. <laughs> Don't get ahead of me. We're at the, we're at the, we're at the, we're at the, we're at the checkout. This guy pulls out a six pack of beer. <laughs> she sees it. She recognizes it because her grandfather drinks it. But anyway, (laughs) 
She saw, she saw the beer. Daddy, beer bad, beer bad, beer bad. I mean, not, not quiet, not quiet. No, no. Not to speak quiet. She has to, ha she has to mimic her dad loud, you know. Beer bad in the grocery store. Right. Hey. Amen. 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 Guys looking around. <laughs> not my child. I don't know how she got in this cart. <laughs> we're at the grocery, we're at, we're getting, I'm, I'm getting something, we're waiting on to get something, and the guy in front of me says to the cashier, can I get a pack of cigarettes? She heard the word cigarettes. Daddy, devil man. Daddy, devil man. <laughs> I said, she's just like her mom. Now she was just she was she was small. You say they don't know. They do know. They know when you sit home on Sunday night. They know when you're watching the wrong programs. They know when you tell the dirty jokes. They know what you're doing. I'm saying, Mom and Dad, you've got to say, I've got to build a foundation so that child has a chance. Amen. Yes, sir. Has a chance. Can I go a step further? In order to have a foundation, you have to have rules, boundaries, and limitations. Come here. You're my son-in-law. This is going to be fun. You see that black line? Do not, do not go outside of this black line. You understand me, son? Now, you're good inside. You understand that? But don't you dare go out. What's that? It's a boundary. Yeah. Right. 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 Now listen to me. Boundaries are not bad. Mom and dad, every child needs to have simple boundaries. Yeah. So the boundaries are what color line, son? Black. Black. I'm glad that you can see. <laughs> now you go on the other side, you're going to get punished. You understand me? What do you say? Yes, sir. There you go. Right. Amen. Hey. So one day, he thinks he's... Smart. I'm not looking. And it's amazing. Get yourself up there. <laughs> what did I say? Black line. You need a spanking. <laughs> Man, this is great. I love the sermon. Actually, my daughter asked me if I'd do this. But anyway... Now, 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 listen to me, Mom and Dad. Now, I, I'm just saying they, children need rules and boundaries. But a rule and boundary means nothing if they cross it and you don't punish them. I am not for beating children, but I am for punishing children. And a SWAT, that when you're not out of control, it's not going to hurt them. I do not believe we ought to beat them to their black and blue. I think that there, you ought to be controlled. There ought to be a, okay, you cross that line, son, you get three swats. Right. Got that? Yes, sir. Okay. How many swats? Three. Three. Two. You just lied. <laughs> One, two, three. You lie again, you're going to get three more swats. You understand me? Yes, sir. Okay. That's all you do. That's all you do. Now, I know I may sound like a mean old ogre, but mom and dad, if, they, if we don't punish them now, and they don't learn rules and boundaries now when they become an adult like he is now, and he breaks the law, go ahead and break the law, cross that line, the guy who wears a badge, We'll put handcuffs on him and bring him to a place where he will have to abide by rules, boundaries, and limitations. But on the outside is a mom and dad with a broken heart. Now, you listen to me. I have sat with countless numbers of parents whose children crossed a boundary and are in jail 
or in prison and their heart's broken. And a lot of times it can be traced back to one thing. Mom and dad didn't take the rule and boundary when they were children serious. Now, I believe in letting children be children. You don't have to have a whole litany of rules. But you do have to have rules. Because rules keep you happy. As long as you're staying here, you're happy. Are you happy? You're happy. You even might even find some friends in here. You want you see if you can find some friends inside. You're not in jail anymore. I'm sorry. Pick better friends. Inside the rules. You go outside those rules and find another friend. Yeah, you outside the rules. Those friends outside the rules probably don't care as much about you as what they can get out of you. I am not trying to thank you, man. At some point, we've got to say, I need to be a watchman in my house. What's the watchman? God says, except, he says, except the Lord build the house. What's that? A foundation. Get a foundation. Have some structure. Get God involved in the child's life and, and have some rules and boundaries and say, okay, this is how we live. We go to church Sunday morning, Sunday night, Wednesday night. Have the structure. Amen. Amen. My daughter never asked what time I get up. She never asked if we're going to church on Sunday. She doesn't ask if we're going to church on Wednesday. She doesn't ask if we're going to bar. Why? I set the structure. This is what we do. Amen. 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 But then as a parent, my job is to be a watchman on the wall. And I'm the watch for wrong influences. My job, listen to me, mom and dad, watch the influence of television. Do not let television babysit your children. Because you don't know what's coming across that program. Whatever happened, I was talking to somebody yesterday, I can't remember who it was. When I was a boy, children didn't sit inside and play video games all day. We got outside and played. Anybody with me so far? Mom said, get outside, son, play. And I got dirty as a boy. It's okay. Boys ought to get dirty. Oh, my poor little boy. He's dirty. Good. Going to teach him to work. He gets a little boo-boo. Like when I had a little boo on my knee, my mom would say, son, go out, throw some dirt on it. Stop your crying. Why? It's raising a boy, raising a man. We got a bunch of sissy men today that they don't, they get a little boo-boo and they go running back home and, oh, I got to quit my job. Hey, suck it up and be a man. It's good for kids to have chores in the home. It's good to have that structure. I, as a dad and I and my wife as a, as a mom, we have to be the watchmen and watch the, the friends. There's times you got to say to your children, you can't be a friend with them. Yeah, right. Yeah, that's right. You say, why? Because you know they don't. Yeah. 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 Amen. Amen. Yeah. Well, why, Mom? Because I told you. That's right. yeah. can, I can I help you out, Mom and Dad? You don't have to explain to your children you gave them the rule, period. Yeah. Because how many of you mamas get that little gut instinct, something's not right? Yeah. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah. You know, something's not right. You can't, you can't explain it. You just know something's not right. All right now. Yeah. Yeah. And the child comes and says, why? Mama can't tell you why. She just has that gut instinct. Right. Right. Amen. That's it. You got to trust it. Amen. But can I tell you this? Last of all, can I say this? You know what children need the most? A Christian dad and mom. Amen. Amen. You know why? Who's the child belong to? Talk to me. It belongs to who? Lord. The Lord. God. Amen. God gave them to who? Amen. You, the parents. Now, if they're God's, 
then you, if you're not saved, can't raise them the way that God wants you to raise them. Why? You're not saved. So every mom and dad here needs to ask yourself this question, am I saved? I didn't ask you, are you baptized? Are you saved? If you're not saved, then let's get saved today. Get saved today. So your children have a Christian daddy, Christian mama. In the past eight days, I've buried children, 20-year-old and a 37-year-old. And in both instances, I've been able to look at the parents and know that they will be able to see their children again because they're saved. When I do a funeral of a of an elderly person, that, and I find out the elderly person, I can look at the children and say, you'll get to see mom and dad again. Amen. Yes, sir. The best thing that your children can have is to know, I'll see them again. Yes. I'll see them again. Where? Heaven. Why? Because they got saved. Yeah. How'd they get saved? They realized they were a sinner on their way to hell. Yep. They realized that Jesus Christ died on the cross and shed his blood and was buried and rose again to pay for their sins. Yeah. And he says, I saved them. I got the, my payment applied to their life. They got saved. Now they can go to heaven. A saved parent will always do better in raising a child than a lost parent ever will. Amen. Amen. So let me ask the question, mom and dad. Just answer this inside your heart. Do you love your child? Amen. Then get saved. Amen. Get a foundation. Set the structure. Have rules and boundaries. Love them. Bring them up the way God wants you to bring them up. And when you get a little frustrated, you just say, I, they're God's. God, I need your mind for them because I don't know how to get through. And there's a time we don't know how to get through. But because they're God's, he will. Father, a very simple sermon, not a very dynamic sermon, but a helpful sermon, I believe, that could help some moms and dads. And Father, I'm asking today, there's some parents here probably, first of all, that just need to get saved. Then there's others that just moms and dads probably need to come down to an altar as a mom and dad and just commit themselves to raise their children in a godly way. There's some grandparents here that need to say, I'm going to come down and commit myself to be a godly grandparent so my grandchild has a godly example as a grandparent. God, help us to do what's right. Heads are bowed, eyes are closed.